Okay, I'm making a real quick video today. Just, uh, just basically in response, I was I was surfing a little bit today, and I, for some reason, I came across a bunch of people that were once again espousing the benefits of cassettes. Cassettes. Uh, now I have them, uh, just for my old old collection, and occasionally I like to record things onto cassettes to listen to them back for various reasons. Uh, but not because of the fidelity. Cassettes are absolutely horrible for many, many reasons. Many reasons. Um, and, you know, I came across a bunch of videos of uh, this, particularly this one guy that's uh, so incredibly into cassettes and, you know, God drones on about them and how great they are and all these, all these mystery benefits. And I just, it, it, I, I, it was just a blur to me. I was thinking, you've got to be kidding me. Cassettes are the worst recording medium. Not as bad as a track used to be, but almost as bad. So I thought I'd give you a little demonstration. I do have uh, a nice cassette deck here. This is fairly new. Uh, I use it for my legacy cassettes and, and uh, CDs, uh, mostly streaming now digitally. But uh, So I thought I'd do a little experiment. And here's how the experiment went. Um, I plugged in my uh, audio generator right there. Uh, into the back of the cassette deck to record test tones. And I recorded the following tones. Uh, uh, I recorded a 1K, a 20 hertz, a 100 hertz, a 5K, a 10K, a 15K, a 12K, and an 18K. Um, they're kind of out of order here, but that's the order that I recorded them in, just out of curiosity to see what the cassette deck would do to them. They were all recorded at the 0 dB level. I used the meter here and made sure that I didn't saturate the cassette. Um, and as in my um, signal generator outputs less than 1% THD so just as an example of what a good clean sine wave should look like this, this, this is not coming out of the cassette this is coming directly out of my signal generator my audio generator uh, that's a 1 kilohertz sine wave it's perfect um, and I have it hooked up to the Keithley you can see it's 1k uh, I input uh, to the back of the uh, cassette deck, about uh, one volt RMS, which is roughly line level. And let's do some THD so you can see how good my audio generator is, 0 .009. And I did that. I did the same thing. I recorded that signal, and I went ahead and recorded all these. Uh, the THDs remain below uh, 0.01%. So let's get a look at what the playback of that recorded signal looks like Let's see what the cassette does to the signal. Okay, beginning with our 1K signal, playing back through the cassette. There it is. And, well, look how wobbly it is. It's kind of moving up and down, left and right. Uh, it is 1K, but uh, that is just horrendous. And let's look at the THD. It's our 1K, it's roughly point it's bouncing around because the signal is wobbling, but it's roughly 0.5 to 0.8 percent THD. Uh, so it's added quite a bit of THD. Um, look at that bouncing around. Uh, occasionally there's a little dropout. I guess it's due to the magnetic nature of the tape. And uh, I recorded about a minute of each. So the next tone we'll be coming up on will be uh, 20 hertz. That's just absolutely terrible. Okay, now we're on 20 hertz. Let me do an auto set here. Um, well, that's supposed to be a good clean sine wave, but look at it. Uh, I don't even know what you'd call that thing. Uh, I call it 12.3% THD. Um, and when I recorded it, it was less than 0 0.01, and it was a nice clean steady sine wave. So uh, obviously magnetic tapes don't handle low frequencies that well. Um, the next signal coming up will be 100 hertz. Again, this is being played back through the cassette, having been recorded through the cassette deck. Um, that's one of the ugliest looking. I mean, if there is such thing as an ugly sine wave, that would be it. Now we're at 100 hertz. Um, um, look at that thing. Uh, that's not exactly what I call a sine wave. I don't know what the heck it did to it. Um, we're looking at 2.5% THD. 
um, is a little more steady than the 1K wave. I mean, it's still you can see it moving around a little bit, um, but um, that is that thing is ugly. Uh, not exactly a sine wave. There's some harmonics being added to it uh, for sure. Um, pretty bad. Again, still holding at 2.6% THD. Um, our next wave will be 5K, 5 kilohertz. Uh, I'm just waiting for the cassette to get to that point. Again, I recorded about a minute of each. Didn't exactly time it, but I just sort of guessed at it. Look at that. Ugh. Is this what you want to be? Is this what? <laughs> Just the recording medium you want to use. Um, okay, now we're at 5K, uh, and that is just oh God, what's happening to it? Um, that's just terrible. Um, I can't even get a good lock on the THD, but it's somewhere around. It's bouncing around, but it's about 0.5 percent. So the sine wave is pretty fairly clean, but uh, look at the speed variations and look at the amplitude variations. It's just not even close to being consistent. Um, I don't even know what's happening right there. Um, maybe I, I bounced to my 10K. Let me see. Yeah, okay, now we're on 10K tone. Uh, look at that. I mean, it can't keep amplitude or it can't keep frequency. Uh, we're somewhere, I can't even get a lock on it because the signal is not consistent, but it's somewhere. It's, it's, the sine wave is somewhere around 0.5% THD, but the problem is the consistency of the amplitude um, and even the frequency is bouncing around. Okay, now we're at 15k. It can't even record tape can, can't even record that. Okay, this is what you're looking at here is noise. That's just noise. That's not even a sine wave. You can see the voltages. So it's peak to peak 210 millivolts. Yet I recorded it at one volt RMS in, and. Uh, so that's just noise, that's not a sine wave. Can't even consider that to be an output because it just can't even output uh, at 15K. Um, now maybe that's a function of this particular cassette deck, maybe with metal tape, and uh, which I'm using standard tape, but you know, maybe with metal tape or CRO2, you know, in a better deck uh, from the old days, you know, one of the top notch ones, maybe you could get some 15K on there. Okay, now we're back to 12K. Hmm. There we go. That's our 12k. So we get something at 12k. Horrendous. Um, can't get a lock, but it's bouncing between 0.5 and 1% THD. But it's what it's what the tape is doing to the amplitude. It's just it's you know kind of warbling. It's dancing. Uh, it's ridiculous. Um, you know, it, it's it's horrendous. So. And now we're at uh, 18K. Of course, I couldn't get 15. I can't get 18. This is just nothing but noise right here. Um, no doubt about it. So, there you have it. Um, that's what a cassette deck... Well, that's what recording on magnetic tape. This is kind of an extreme example, but again, I used a brand new standard cassette. Uh, I recorded those tones into a relatively new uh, 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 reputable Tascam cassette recorder. And uh, I got those results. So, so if that's what um, uh, some of these internet gurus think is a good recording medium, a cassette, then well, have at it. Um, just wanted to go through this exercise to show you that cassettes are great for nostalgia. Um, I, I, I do record on them sometimes to listen to them back, to listen, you know, to it's again nostalgic. If you love to hear the tape hiss in the background. Um, one of the things the cassette will do is, uh, you know, uh, I'll make up a word here, anal analogize your digital files, okay? It's basically a low-pass filter, uh, you know, the cassette itself. So if you want to get rid of any digital artifacts, record to a cassette and listen back because, you know, you ain't getting anything above 12 to 15K. But, again, what you are getting is that garbage that you just saw right there. You're getting inconsistent amplitudes. Uh, you're getting variations of frequency, and in some cases for the low frequencies, you're getting gobs of total harmonic distortion. Ridiculous. So anyway, for you cassette fans out there, enjoy. Ciao.